What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the simple test circuit for the ICL8038 waveform generator chip. And as you can see it's running quite well. It has a pretty nice looking sine wave running at about 7.3 kilohertz I think. And basically I'm running it off of a virtual split power supply. Basically what I did is I took 24 volts DC and then I ran it into a 12 volt regulator and I used the plus 24 volts for the positive voltage, the negative for the negative, and then the 12 volts for the virtual ground. I'll be showing you how to do that. We'll go over that, we'll build that first, and then we'll go on into the uh, circuit building. And so here is the schematic that I drew straight off of the data sheet. As you can see, it's pretty simple. And so, Basically, what we're building is this, which you can buy off of eBay for like $3. But I figured someone might be interested to know how to build it so they could insert it into their project instead of having a whole chip. And so we'll go ahead and get right to it. Okay, this is the schematic from the data sheet of the 12 volt regulator. There's the chip number. As you can see, it's real simple. There's a voltage in, voltage out ground. So basically you hook your voltage in, voltage out, and then the ground connects to both of these through a capacitor. And on this board I removed everything except for the capacitors and the IC. Uh, I have these lined up like this in parallel so that it'll add up together to make a 0.33 microfarad. And then these two are added together to make a 0.1 microfarad. And so that just makes it a lot easier because I don't have that exact value. Okay, and on this chip, if you hold it like this, this is the input, this is ground, the middle one, and that's the output voltage. It'll output 12 volts. I have 24 volts on the input. I can't remember what the range for the input is, but basically it'll hold it to 12 volts. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the chip and face it like this. I'm going to insert it in between the capacitors. Make sure that it's not in the occupied one. Okay, so there's that. These capacitors are still independent of this. So I'll go ahead and take a jumper wire come from the positive, this is where I'm going to put the positive voltage, positive 24 volts. And it's going to come into the input, the first very left pin. And then I'm going to take the output, which is the far right pin. Go there. And this will be the 12 volts. So I'll just put it on that pin for now. We'll change it here in a minute to the virtual ground, but. Okay, and then I'm going to take the middle pin. And I'm going to hook it to a tap point is what I call it and then hook that point to the ground. Okay. And then since I've already got these capacitors over here in the holes and these, I just need to connect them. So basically, I'm gonna take this far outer pin And plug it in. And then I'm going to go into the left side of the capacitor. And then I'm going to come out the right side of the capacitor. And I'm going to go to that ground tap we did earlier. Whoops. Nope, that's right. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the input side. That was the output side. So go to the very left pin, go from there 
I call it the input of the capacitor. Now on the other side of the capacitor. It goes to that grounding point we made earlier. Make sure those are all on the same ground. And then this one goes to the the real ground from the power supply. Okay, this is the 12 volt output. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just plug this in and I'm going to measure it with a voltmeter and make sure that's working correct before we hook it up for the next circuit. Okay, so I've gotten the voltmeter and we're ready to plug this thing in and see if it works. So here's my 24 volts. I'm going to hook the positive side in. The negative side in. And then I'll hook the positive to that 12 volt line that we ran earlier. Then I'll hook the negative to here. And as you can see, it's exactly 12 volts. Fluctuating between 12 and 12.1. But it's really, really close. I'll lower this so you can see the second digit. So 12.15 volts, not too bad. That'll serve as our virtual ground. I'll show you what I mean here in the next step. Also, I'm going to make a, another quick little deal on how to do the uh, two 9-volt batteries in case you don't want to do this. It's a little bit simpler. So, And I almost forgot, but this 12 volts that we ran right here, for the next circuit that we're building, see I've got the... This is the 24 volt supply. This is the positive on this side. This is the negative on this side. That's for the voltage regulator. But I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add it to this negative terminal right here because it's not in use. This The positive one is in use right here. And then the negative one, those are the power supply. This, I'm gonna plug into this ground right here on the left. And it's going to serve as the virtual ground. That way when you take your uh, output on pin 2, 3, or 9 for your waveform, you'll have a ground and it'll be this. Okay, so this is how to make the split power row with two 9-volt batteries. As you can see, I've connected a connector to this one and that one. Just take the positive from one of them and hook it to the negative of the other one so that you have a black and red tied together and then take this is your positive voltage here the red one and the black one is your negative voltage and this is your virtual ground so you could just plug this in positive voltage negative voltage virtual ground okay so let's go ahead and start building this circuit I've already got the chip placed on the board with alignment pin on the top. This is pin 1 on the top, 7, 8, 14. And the first thing I'm going to look at is the 10K resistor going from positive 12 volts to pin 9, where you can take your square wave output. So with the resistor, I'm going to go from positive 12 volts to pin 9. And then the next one I'm going to look at is pin 6. It goes straight to positive 12 volts. So I'm going to go from pin 6, second from the bottom, to positive 12 volts. Then the next two pins, 5 and 4, are both 10K. And those two adjust your duty cycle. So I'm going to use potentiometers, a 10K potentiometer for each one of those, instead of the regular resistor. This way I can adjust it, so I'm going to place this one here, and this one here, and then I'm going to go from plus 12 volts to the top pin on this one. This is just how I'm doing it. And then the middle pin to pin 5. And then the exact same thing for pin 4. 
straight from positive 12 volts to the top pin. And then from the middle pin to pin four. Then the next two, seven and eight, is just a switch on this schematic. And basically, if it's a closed switch, it turns the circuit on. If it's open switch, it turns it off. So I'm going to just connect pin seven and eight together. This way, it's always on. Okay, and the next pin, 10, goes to negative 12 volts through a 3300 peak resistor, or capacitor. Sorry. So I'm going to come off of pin 10. And I'm going to come down here. And then hook this to the negative voltage right there like that. And this is a non-polarized capacitor, so it doesn't matter which way I put it. The next one is pin 11. It goes straight to negative 12 volts. So I'm going to put that there. Straight to negative 12 volts. Pin 12 goes to negative 12 volts as well through an 82k resistor i'm going to use a potentiometer instead so i'll put it down here and then i'll go from pin 12 to the top pin here and then the middle pin goes to negative 12 volts and then it's all done for the most part. I've found that these grounding resistors you don't need. I think that's just representing a load. Um, this pin nine, you can take your square wave off of. Pin three, triangle, pin two, sine wave. So the next thing we'll do is go ahead and power it up and make sure that everything's going as planned. And these, I've preset this one to around roughly 82K. These two are at 10K. They're turned all the way to the right, which means they're at their maximum resistance value. Okay, so we'll go ahead and power it up and see if it works. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and power this up. I've got my 24 volts right here. This is the positive. This is the negative. I'm going to go ahead and plug the positive in. The right side, the negative end right here, and this will power the whole entire circuit, the voltage regulator circuit, and the ICL 8038 circuit. And then this, this was the output from the voltage regulator, this is the 12 volts, this is plus 24 volts, this is the output 12 volts, I'm going to hook this to the other negative terminal that's not in use. And that's our virtual ground, which my oscilloscope right here, it's the DSO show. And it's a pretty decent little oscilloscope. It's not too bad. I'm going to hook this negative to the scope to the virtual ground right there. And then the positive, I'm going to go ahead and hook to pin 2 and as you can see it's a pretty nice little sine wave not the best one I've ever seen but it's pretty stable about 8 kilohertz so if you reduce the capacitance the frequency will increase and if you make the capacitance larger it will decrease on this particular circuit and then these, if I adjust and turn this, decrease the resistance on this one, you can see the sine wave slanting to the left. And pretty soon it'll go away. That's because it's reached zero on the resistor. And then this one's the same thing. You can turn the resistance down here and it leans towards the right. Frequency will increase, the frequency decreases the other way. 
So we'll go ahead and take a look at the triangle wave on pin three. There it is. So you can make a ramp wave by turning this resistor down. And then you can make an in ramp wave by turning this other resistor down. They also call them sawtooth waves. And then lastly, and before I get off of this, you can see the peak to peak voltage is about seven and a half volts. But when we get a pin nine, which you can hook anywhere on pin nine, you can see the voltage is much larger. So I'll turn that down and you can see it's almost 24 volts peak to peak on the square wave. I'm still not sh real sure why, but anyways, that's how it is. But anyways, this is how to build the simple test circuit. Next, we'll do a video on building the audio generator. Please like and subscribe.